kids. As a parent, I, I can sort of understand in this conversation how a Socratic dialogue fosters, you could say, softer mm -hmm. skills. But what about these things that everybody likes to tout? STEM, mm -hmm. science, technology, and, and, and math, and I'm forgetting the E, <laughs> engineering. Right, right. Um, you know, how do you be Socratic in STEM? Sure. So, first of all, um, mathemata, the Greek root for math, is that means that which is teachable. And so, actually, I do think that math, you know, there is a Socratic role in math, and we can get to that in a minute. But a lot of math is more teachable. And it's funny because most people think math is the hard subject. It's that which can be taught, whereas most other things uh, are absorbed socially uh, and including, you know, verbal reasoning. A lot of that is absorbed socially via verbal interactions, real-time interactions. But the way I see what I do is most kids are alienated from academic work, yeah, intellectual work. Again, normal, I, and I'm sympathetic. I happen to be a geeky intellectual. Again, I ran away and read books when I was a teenager instead of going out uh, and doing some of the things kids do. But normal kids, yeah, want to run and play. And so how do we how do we go from this natural, vigorous sort of thing that we evolved for over millions of years to uh, actually doing learning modern skills? Part of it is first we need a relationship to a positive relationship where we can show our initiative and energy to intellectual matter. Jewish culture has been amazing. You know, some I think twenty percent of Nobel laureates are Jews, whereas. 2%, 1% of the population are Jewish uh, in the US, so tiny. But a lot of it is Jew for a thousand years, two thousand years, Jewish culture consists of arguing about texts. If you're a you know young boy in a Jewish culture or a girl, you're reading and arguing about the Talmud. I once had a rabbi right. come and I mean, isn't the Talmud itself is basically parallel is just layer upon layer of critique, isn't it? Absolutely. So I, yeah, I once had a rabbi come visit one of my classes and he said, This is what we do in Talmudic school. You know, you think and talk and argue about texts forever. And oh, by the way, then you become absolute intellectual and entrepreneurial rock stars. Um, so, you know, I think you, it's hard to exaggerate the importance of having uh, the life of the mind be part of who you are. And maybe that is vis a vis the kind of hunting, gathering lifestyle, a little bit unnatural, but there are our subcultures like Jews, like the Socratic subcultures I create, where it becomes natural to think, talk, and argue about ideas. And then, you know, some kids love math already, but part of this is if you're using your mind, then yeah, math is a different sort of thing. And I, I'm interested in helping people who naturally love math. I love math, so uh, let's accelerate where you love it. That may involve some teaching of math for sure, also learning how to learn math. But I think that for most students, um, they first need to care. And once they care, then if they're interested in learning math, anybody I think can learn a lot of math, but they have to care. If you enjoyed this clip, we've got more where that came from. Be sure to check out our full conversation with Michael Strong. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss our interviews and short videos as they come out each week.